So you're brand new to CG and visual effects and want to get started learning in 2022. It's a daunting task, but there's no reason to worry because you don't have to take it in all at once. And in this video, I want to demystify some of the harder decisions when it comes to getting started, such as what software you should use, what should you learn, and how should you learn it. So if you are trying to get started this year, hopefully by the end of this video, you kind of have an idea of where you want to get started and what you want to do about it. One of the most difficult things to come up with when entering any creative profession is what tools are you going to use to get the job done? And in CG, it is a little more complicated than in some other industries, such as say, like photo retouching or graphic design, where Photoshop and Illustrator are king, and there's not really a bunch of other clear choices after that. In CG, there are different tools for different jobs, and there are a lot of different tools that some people use for the same jobs. However, luckily for you, the beginner, there is one clear choice for which 3D software to use, and that's because it's free, and anybody who knows what I'm talking about at the moment knows I'm talking about Blender. Blender has just come into being production ready by most people's standards within the last couple years, but it has done it in force. I mean, Blender, I think the only thing that I still dislike about Blender is its actual navigation and some of the UI. But Blender has become such a viable engine so fast that it's kind of been a little bit weird for the rest of the industry to see. To give you a little bit of my background, I've been using Cinema 4D now for roughly eight years or so. And for the longest time, Blender has just been kind of looked at as a toy software. I mean, it was always fairly capable. People have done great things in it for years now, but Blender has reached a point where there's almost nothing that you can't do. And the tutorial network, like the education network is so vast that you can really do whatever you want. Blender seems to always get compared to Cinema 4D because for the, uh, like the one man band freelance kind of thing, those are really the two big options as 3ds max and maya are made more for uh, like production pipeline type work um, but i mean when it comes down to it blender being free the education network all of the add-ons the developer support i mean there's not a ton of reason not to start out in it and so even as a cinema 4d user if you're starting in 2022 I recommend that you go with Blender and that you use the tool that is available and that will allow you to hone your craft without you, you know, feeling like you're not getting enough out of it for paying for something. And it's such a capable tool, especially with the addition of geometry nodes and Cycles X has recently come out, which is a fantastic, very photorealistic render engine. I mean, if you're starting in 2022, Blender is definitely the way to go for a plethora of reasons. If you want to do animation work, luckily Blender is already very well equipped for that. And when it comes to your choice of compositing, so that's after you export your animation from Blender, there's another great free option in software for you, which is DaVinci Resolve. And Resolve will allow you to use a lot of the workflows that you learn as you go through the CG 3D process. and translate those skills over. So as you learn 3D, you're gonna learn how to use nodes and work procedurally. And DaVinci Resolve is a great program for CG artists because a lot of those same traits from node-based workflows carry over into Resolve. So Resolve uses nodes for color grading, for fusion effects, and for all of the more in-depth uh, portions of the program. And so Blender and Resolve are really just kind of the power combo in 2022 for beginners getting started, you can do everything in those two programs that you need completely, I mean, free of charge without paying for anything. And so there's a lot to uh, learn with both of those obviously, but with them being free, the education resources are unmatched. So again, in 2022, if you're starting and you're just you know, getting into this industry and you wanna be a one man show who kinda does all kinds of things on your own and does freelance CG, there's not a better option for you than that, that uh, software combo. 
But having free software is no good if you don't really know what you're even trying to accomplish with it. So what exactly should you try to learn? Uh, there's pretty much infinite possibilities if you want to do anything from being a one-man show and creating entire, you know, product commercials by yourself, uh, all the way down to you could specialize in retopology for a major studio if, if you want to do something that niche. So the answer to this question is uh, partially that it's up to you. So if you already know that you want to do sci-fi hard surface modeling and that that's all you want to do, then go for that. But if you are kind of on the other end of the spectrum where you maybe want to do freelance work uh, just so that you never have to work for a studio, but you aren't really you know, sure where to start and know that you're gonna end up needing to do a lot of different things, then there are a couple places that I think you should start. The first of those being right here with cameras, and more specifically cameras and lighting and lenses, how lenses work, um, you know, learn about uh, focal length and aperture and shutter speed for motion blur, Knowing how this works has been the single greatest advantage that I've had in my CG career. Because once you understand how this works and how lighting works and how some materialing works, the sky is really the limit and all you have to do is figure out the technicalities of the software that you're working in because these principles remain with you forever. So no matter what you're rendering out, you can always know that your shot is going to look good if you get these basic principles down. There are tons of ways to learn cameras and lighting. There are tons of different lighting techniques that you can look at. And again, with these softwares, there's just an almost unlimited amount of education on them. So I highly recommend that as a place to start. However, when it comes to learning CG and visual effects, knowing what you want to learn is only half the battle. Sometimes the learning curves in these programs can be steep enough that you can end up feeling dejected after watching a tutorial and walking away and realizing that you don't really understand anything that you just did. You just kind of followed along. And so there's a method to learning and it applies to CG, but it also kind of applies to anything that's really difficult in life. And that is just knowing how to learn. When it comes to CG and procedural design, you're gonna to have to rewire your brain to think a little bit differently. So these tutorials are not gonna make sense at first, and that is okay. The first Houdini tutorial I ever did, and keep in mind, this was about three years after I had been doing CG professionally full time. The first Houdini tutorial I ever did left me feeling like I didn't know the first thing about uh, CG or VFX at all. It was very demotivating, it didn't really, you know, it left none of my creativity in my body. All of it was, all of it was gone. I had no desire to continue learning. And so with learning more challenging things, how I have kind of made myself approach using tutorials is you have to follow, follow tutorials about things that you enjoy and acknowledge when you don't know something. And then once you make it through the tutorial just following along, you're gonna need to go back and do it a couple more times, gradually taking out more instruction from whatever video it is that you're watching. So in my case, how I learn best is I watch a tutorial, I go all the way through it, and then I go back and I will do what I remember and only use the video when I need it. And the whole time that I'm going through it, the second, third, fourth times, I'm explaining the steps to myself as I go out loud, like literally speaking out loud, telling myself this is why we do this so that then we get this output and blah, 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 on down the line. And that is what rewires your brain. So you're not just memorizing steps, you're understanding why things are happening. And that's what it takes when it comes to CG. So here we are back where we started. And you may be thinking to yourself, all of that is great information, but I'm still not exactly sure what I should be doing. So now I wanna give you some actionable steps that you can take to get started today and hopefully learn something by the end of the day. If you think you wanna get into CG work, download Blender. 
I mean, it's as simple as that. Open the program, mess around with that cube they give you, learn how to navigate the viewport, and then find a tutorial based on something that you actually want to learn. Creating things that you enjoy is gonna motivate you when you're done to go back through and learn the process so that you can do it yourself and even add to it on your own. Follow that tutorial, study your end product, try to understand the steps that you went through to get there, and then go back to the beginning, do what you can on your own, use the video when you need it, but explain out loud to yourself as you're going why you're performing the different steps. And if you don't feel like you can do that, then you probably don't understand the concept enough and you need to do it again. And that's okay, this is just gonna take time. And the more, the more you're able to explain to yourself as you go, the more that concept is getting rooted into your brain where you can pull, you know, whether it be the whole thing or just a little part of it into another project without anyone else's help. And you will be well on your way within your first 100 hours in any of these softwares to creating really cool stuff all on your own. Keep in mind that the skill ceiling is quite literally limitless with 3D visual effects. You can do anything you want as long as you have the time and patience and computing power to sit down and do it. You're gonna have victories, you're gonna get frustrated, and there's gonna be a lot of time in between spent on R&D. But these are the few things that I think you should do if you are just starting out with CG and visual effects in 2022. Thank you for watching this video. There's gonna be a whole series of beginner tutorials coming out uh, at some point in the near future, so get subscribed if that interests you in any way. If this video helped you out in any way, drop a like. If you have any questions, you can shoot me a tweet on Twitter, a DM on Instagram, you can comment on the video. I get back to everybody, uh, so if you have any questions specifically about starting or programs or anything like that, I'll be more than happy to help. But until next time, thank you for watching the video and I will see you in the next one.